So we're going to have a look now at how um, you can mesh and texture these huge data sets out of um, Agisoft PhotoScan. This is a one-to-one -one scale um, reproduction of a real location where every rock and tree and leaf has been photo scanned and recreated in 3D using 2,773 uh, photographs that have all been taken um, of this location surrounding the rocks and um, and the trees from every angle to rebuild all the um, all the surfaces in 3D. So how would you go about um, how would you go about creating a mesh and a te and texture maps for this scene if it's a large scale scene? So um, basically, what you can do is you can go through an environment like a city or a desert or a rainforest or um, a beach with um, a camera. And if you're specifically photographing it for photo scanning, you can take photos around objects and reproduce them um, from every angle uh, of large locations and create these dense point clouds of, of the environment, which give you a very realistic um, high resolution reproduction of the, um, of the scene that you're using. So once you've got a dense point cloud, how then do you move on to the next stage, which is creating um, modeled textured geometry? So basically what we have is, um, if we have a look at this uh, shot here, this is what um, polygons look like, and this is what uh, point clouds look like. So point cloud doesn't have any texture or um, UV maps. And this image has got different levels of detail of the polygons and it's got um, UV maps and it's got texture maps on it. So that's basically the difference between, um, between a point cloud scene uh, and a 3D scene that you can use in VFX production. So if we assume that we're using this scene for previews, for planning out a film before principal photography starts using a one-to-one -one photo scanned um, scene, how would you quickly and efficiently um, create geometry and texture maps for this scene? Well, it's a lot more simple than you would think, but let's first have a look at how, um, how you shouldn't do it. If we zoom out on this scene, we can see here that there's a bounding box around this scene, which is encompassing the entire um, world, if you like, that we've um, created in this photo scan um, data set. So basically, all the rocks and trees and objects in this scene are all covered in one object, and each tree and each rock will have about 32k of texture detail in it we can extract out of photo scan, um, and uh, probably about 5 million polygons worth of um, worth of geometry information in each one of these objects. So we have 32K texture and 5 million polygons object. So if we look at the whole um, area as one giant scene, I mean, that's just an enormous amount of texture and geometry detail um, that we're never going to be able to put into one mesh and one um, texture map. But let's have a look at that anyway. Um, what, what that would look like. So if we go into build mesh and we set the um, highest setting, we can see here that to mesh this scene um, at high is going to be 23,925,000 um, polygons. Now, while you can um, by all means process that and have a look at it in photo scan, where you're going to run into problems is UV mapping and texture mapping. The reason is because what you want to be able to do is split these objects into separate pieces so that you're able to UV map them and create different levels of detail um, of, the, of each high resolution model. So for example, if you've got this rock here um, that is uh, 5 million polys or 2.5 million polys, it, it'd be great to be able to have you know, a 20,000 polygon low resolution model 
model of that that is textured so that you can use it in a previous scene in Maya. Because if you've got the 5 million polygon ZBrush model, um, that's going to load in ZBrush fine, but it's not going to load in into Maya. So you want to be able to cut these down in, um, in resolution. The second problem with um, building a mesh that's 20 to 50 million polygons is it's going to be difficult for you to do different processes in ZBrush for all its um, for all its amazing uh, power. Um, ZBrush still has limitations within practicality of um, of working with meshes and. To be honest, with this kind of scene here, because of the size of the um, objects and the proximity the viewer is likely to be to the objects, you'd be more likely to be wanting to put detail into the scene rather than t take detail out of the scene. So we'd be more wanting to get a final um, scene that has maybe 150 million um, to 250 million po polygons in the scene with super high detail in all these objects um, so that we're able to resolve the highest possible amount of detail um, in these scenes. If we have a look at these trees here um, in this shot, each one of the trees here has got um, a bottom section that is uh, 2.5 million polygons and a top section that's 2.5 million polygons and that gives you all this fine t detail in the moss and in the root systems that are coming off it and in the leaves as well. Similarly, these roots are 5 million polygons um, as well in the background. So um, you want to be able to get as much geometry and texture detail out of the scene you possibly can um, without cutting it down. So the way to do that um, is not by building a mesh that covers the entire um, world that you're recreating. It's the easiest um, sort of corner cuttingest way to do it. Um, and you can definitely, by all means, mesh huge scenes and bring them straight into a software like Mesh Lab and um, cut the polygons down of the scene so that you can load it into Maya, no problems. However, it's just not going to be um, very uh, clean from a technical director's point of view when you're working with deformation, um, effects elements, animation, texture maps baking in lights, all kinds of different things that you might be wanting to do with the scene. The other thing is UV maps are really important for Unreal Engine because when the lighting bakes into the scene from the sunlight, um, it needs very nice, very clean UV maps to be able to bake the lighting data down onto the, um, onto the geometry. Um, and that's just not going to work with um, creating these uh, shredded UVs in Agisoft Photoscan. So the way to actually create um, textured modeled um, parts of this scene that are the, have the highest possible detail is actually to break the scene up into small pieces. The question I guess is how small should the pieces be? If we zoom into this, um, this tree over here, you can see here that even at medium detail level on this point cloud, there's quite a lot of detail um, in the base of this tree. There's leaves, there's um, these roots that are coming off. And if we look at the, um, the render of this, there's just a massive amount of detail in such a small part of the image. So how big do we actually make the bounding box um, that you're creating? The other problem to um, overcome is if you make the bounding box too small and you're recreating like a tiny little section of leaves and grass, to create the whole environment is going to just take an extremely un, um, unpractical amount of time to rebuild um, basically dozens of meters um, of, of rocks and water and leaves and ferns and tree trunks is just going to be an enormous amount of processing time to actually create this scene. And then it will be really difficult to reassemble again um, and to manage all the data that it's creating on disk and to be able to put it together um, in an efficient way. So the way to create these scenes um, is 
is very straightforward and you can actually do it very mathematically um, without having to break it up into separate rocks and trees and uh, and vines and then re reassemble it um, in a very difficult way. The way that you can do it to get the maximum geometry and texture detail is to break it up into subsections that easily fit into memory and that process quickly on the um, on the photo scan software. So the settings that I found that work the best is to um, is to keep the polygon limit at high under 10 million polygons when you're building the mesh. So if we have a look at the um, at the size of this bounding box, whatever size of the scene you're working with, you can actually get this bounding box and drag it onto a section of the um, a section of the mesh and create a quadrant, a small little volumetric cube which you can then um, recreate as a piece. And all you have to do is go from one end of the environment to the other um, with these little boxes and create a grid pattern across the environment. The grid pattern will be able to hold um, 5 million or so polygons and a 16K to 32K texture map. And each um, quadrant of that um, data will easily fit on a mid-range workstation. It'll also be very quick to process in Agisoft PhotoScan. It'll be easy to work with in ZBrush. It'll be easy to UV map and the texture resolution and the um, detail will hold up very easily um, when you're working with it. So when you uh, have created a section of the, um, of the map um, with this, with this uh, by dragging the um, bounding box over just one piece, what you can do is you can create um, like uh, you can create it in in pieces like A1, B, B1, C1, and and then assemble it in rows um, down through the through the, the um, environment. And when you go to reassemble those, as long as they've got um, a matching overlap without any gaps, they'll perfectly seamlessly. Uh, linked together without any um, texture or geometry um, mismatches whatsoever. So if we have a look at building the mesh from this small section at high, we've got here a very manageable 1.8 million polygons, which is going to process um, in PhotoScan very quickly and very efficiently and create a, a very manageable model. So let's have a look at one of some of the sections that have been created already. Um, and I actually was able to recreate this um, scene in about uh, 12 sections, which were rows across the um, across the rocks and forests. So let's have a look at a textured section of that and see what it looks like. So here's the um, dense point cloud from this scene, and we can see that um, I've edited the scene to delete the foliage from the top of the... Um, the trees so that we're able to reproduce that in speed tree or another um, tree creation software. So you can see here a little bit easily now the rocks, um, the tree trunks and all the different texture and leaf detail that goes down these, um, these waterways uh, that comes down through the, through the scene. Now it's quite, quite time consuming to edit these, um, edit these point clouds. So just be careful when you're deleting um, data out of them and also too you can easily just mesh the um, the foliage and then delete it in um, once it's been meshed um, in ZBrush or in PhotoScan as well you don't need to necessarily spend uh, days cutting out the um, dense point cloud so here we've got our um, our data from this uh, section and if we have a look at our bounding box we can see here that it's sliced a section of this environment off um, into a piece. And this is section four of the final environment that I created. Now, if we go onto the geomet geometry for this scene, you can see here that if we um, expand out our side panel here, 
we can see here that our 3D model has 2,034,000 um, points, which has been um, which has been done at high resolution detail. So out of that, um, we're probably we probably can get more detail out of this um, out of this mesh and get even higher texture detail. But in the um, in the essence of getting it finished um, quickly without having to break it up into uh, 20 or 40 sections. Um, I've just done it at this detail level, which was totally sufficient for getting the, um, the imagery that I needed. So if you look the, here, there's, um, there's ample geometry detail in this scene, especially once you bring it into Render Man. And if we have a look at the textured version of this scene, we're probably pushing the um, texture mapping a little bit far by using a 16K texture instead of a um, 64 or 32K texture or breaking it up into several texture maps. But nevertheless, it still does a pretty good job at covering this area um, with texture so that we're able to see um, the different surface variations in the scene. So even down in these little rocky areas down here, you can see here you're getting great um, texture variation and detail that you'd that it would be very difficult to reproduce um, if you were texturing this manually by hand because you've got all of these rocks are totally unique. Um, they all look like they fit together in a very realistic way. The way you've got the leaves, you know, the gaps of all the rocks, and even these rocks that are down closer to the water have a kind of wet. Um, mossy surface on them, whereas the rocks that are up the top have got a kind of dry, cooler, mossy surface. So it's really cool um, effect that you get from uh, from scanning all this stuff. Now this is all going to be covered in water, so don't worry about the texture not resolving on the watery surfaces. Um, and you can see here that where it's done the um, the tree trunks. One of the great things about photo scanning, as opposed to tileable um, textures that you've created uh, procedurally, is that all the texture maps are unique for all these different surfaces. So you'll get like a different texture on this tree, this tree, this tree, this tree, this tree, this tree and all the roots and rocks and surfaces are going to give you totally unique, um, really nice uh, variation in the in the textures that are on the on the surfaces. So this is easily um, this is easy to uh, UV unwrap in uh, UV Master in ZBrush. It's very easy to paint uh, the geometry in ZBrush as well to sculpt up um, more details and put in like, for example, more roughness on the um, on these uh, buttress roots or smooth the um, the geometry out. It's really easy to just basically work with this scene and um, and create the uh, create the work that you're after, and that's basically how you can um, how you can piece together these um, these large scenes and be able to um, be able to texture map and generate geometry for them. So if we go up to workflow build mesh, in this little section that we've got here. We've got, um, if we set it to high um, high polygon count for reconstruction, we're looking at 6,456,943 uh, polygons. So that's a good polygon size um, limit that will easily work in ZBrush. If we were going to cover the whole scene, we'd be looking more about 25. So let's open up another um, scene that I've got here, which is going to be section 4. Six, and we'll just have a look at the textured uh, output from that. So this section here is um, further down the environment, and you can see here that um, it's also got a lot of texture detail in it because um, because of breaking up the scene into separate pieces. It's allowed it to um, to keep the maximum amount of detail in each area of the scene, which is really good. And it's basically what we want to achieve. 
So this is a section um, which is the end of these roots and these little trees that are along the waterbed here. And in the final image, these look like this. So that's the two trees there and the end of the um, the end of the roots. Another angle of that scene is here. So you can see here there's excellent detail um, once these sections are all put together. Now this water um, section here is uh, covering over where the um, this photo scan is trying to fill in this water detail here. So all of that's covered over with um, with a water plane that refracts through the geometry. Now you can optionally um, uh, texture over the top of um, of the the mossy kind of underwater uh, missing surfaces that are here, and that's what I've done to be able to get a nice refraction um, of the scene in in the software. But basically you can see here that it's just got great detail even in OpenGL in the viewport of the rocks and the moss and the leaves and the way they naturally um, kind of cover the ground surfaces. Um, keep in mind that all the edges of this scene are going to be covered with foliage from a software like GrowFX or SpeedTree. And what you're really trying to get is just the detail um, in the in the rocks and the different surfaces that are um, not on the water and that have um, have greenery and and different objects around them. So that's basically how you can um, you know how you can uh, get the best texture and geometry detail out of big um, data data sets like this. Now it's not um, it's not an easy necessarily super easy to do. You need a lot of uh, disk space, a lot of uh, processor speed, and a lot of um, GPU RAM to be able to do this. However, um, what you're actually doing is creating a one-to-one -one recreation of a real-world location that you can use in previs or VFX. So it's a very, very powerful. Um, it's a very, very powerful. Uh, thing to be able to achieve in a 3D um, software package and to be able to recreate this manually would just be an enormous amount of modeling and texturing labor um, to create. So if we have a look at the render of this part of the scene um, in RenderMan, you can see here that um, it, gets, it gives you very, very natural uh, realistic results that just are very convincing even though then probably um, you could probably scan this at a higher resolution if you had more time um, you could also get more geometry detail out of this again once you if you had more time but um, in a very quick sort of like two-day turnaround of photography and photo scanning output you can easily smash out um, these kinds of images and this kind of environmental detail as long as you know how to um, break up the scene into separate pieces and what kind of limitations there are on memory and on um, your texture map detail when you're um, actually uh, using these uh, scenes in ZBrush and in Maya. So that's a look at, um, at uh, modeling, texturing and processing data in Agisoft PhotoScan and how to edit it in ZBrush. I hope you really enjoyed this course. Um, it was really fun to make. It was amazing to photograph all these um, environments and scenes. And hopefully um, I get the chance to um, create some urban environments and do some other really interesting um, environments that have got uh, additional differences to this, um, this rainforest environment that we've been able to see, um, that we've been able to see in... Um, in creating Agisoft PhotoScan uh, 3D scenes. The, um, the, um, the other course that is going to be uh, run, um, which links into this course, is a photoreal lighting and photoreal uh, compositing course, which is going to look at how to bring all this data and textures into RenderMan and Nuke and actually render and light. Um, the scene using high dynamic range images. I hope you enjoyed the course um, and 
If you have any questions, make sure to post them onto the FX PhD forums. Um, I'll be on there to answer any questions that you may have about photo scanning or about the software. And um, let me know, uh, definitely post any work that you've got um, creating photo scanned assets from the data that I've uploaded onto, um, onto the site for your training. All the best. I'll see you guys next time.